What's going on guys? It's Becca Switzer with Roof Sales Mastery and author of Diamonds in the Sky here on my way to Costco, the adult playland. You go there for uh, economy sized toilet paper and you leave with a paper shredder and a Vitamix, you know, that's what happens. And hopefully a tummy full of uh, taquito samples if you're really lucky and you get there at the right time. <laughs> I'm trying out my new little gooseneck um, phone holder thing here and I don't know if it's going to be soup or bouncy or what, but I guess we're just going to find out. Today we're going to talk about a topic that I actually talked about the other day, but I'd like to touch on again because I thought of some other points. Um, I hear from business owners every now and again that say things like, you know, Becca, we want to invest in training like yours for our company, but we're afraid that if we buy training and we train our guys, then they're going to be too good and then they're going to leave <laughs> and go start their own company. And my point in my previous video was, okay, so your question to me is, what if we train our guys really well and they leave? And my point was, what if you don't train them and they stay? <laughs> what, why would you prevent your own company from having the potential to do much better than they are by being afraid that they're going to get too good and leave? What? So you'd rather keep them shitty and stay, <laughs> keep them? That makes no sense. Uh, so that was my first point. But the second point was, you know, I started to think about it because I got a lot of comments and messages after I posted that video from people who said, Becca, that video really hit home. Like it really made sense to us. Like, thank you so much for sharing it. Um, and I thought about it a little bit more. And the other part that's super important here to take into consideration is this. Let's say that you do train your guys really, really well. And some of them leave and they go and start their own company. Well, either way, you guys are going to be operating the same playing field. People leave right now, regardless of how good your company trains them or not. Like that's not the reason people leave or stay. So if you don't train them and you're operating down here and those people leave, they're also gonna be operating over here probably, right? Assuming that's the logic. If you train them and you're operating up here and they leave, then they're also gonna be operating up here. So why would you prevent your own company from getting better results regardless if you're gonna have competition regardless they're either gonna be operating down here like you are because that's where you were operating or they'll maybe operate up here where you are because that's where you're operating what's the difference the only difference is you're always gonna have competition like your best defense is a good offense that's what I want you guys to remember that's what Zane and I say all the time your best defense is a good offense so stop focusing so much on preventing other people from leaving and succeeding because that's gonna happen anyway. It happens every single day. And the thing is, the people who are going to leave and start their own business are gonna do that no matter what kind of opportunity you provide them at your company. There are just some people who get into the business and go, I'd like to do this on my own. And it doesn't matter what you provide. I'll tell you this, they leave a lot faster if you have a shitty company because they go, I could do this better myself and they'll leave. If you have a good situation, you're providing them a lot of really good support and back end stuff and training, and they have a cush situation at their company, they'll probably actually stick around longer because things go well for them. It's easy. They only have to manage their own stuff. So it actually kind of works in the reverse, like giving them good training and good support makes it easier for them to succeed at your company and actually less likely to leave. Okay. The other question that I get a lot is about non-competes. It's in the same vein of that topic, right? So a lot of people ask me like, hey, should we have our guys sign non-competes? Will that prevent people from leaving? Will it make it harder for them to leave, et cetera? And the truth is, I think most people probably do make their salespeople sign non-competes, but again, it really doesn't make that big of a difference. If it were me, I would not dedicate my time and energy focusing on how I can go after the people who decided to leave and make their own opportunity. I would rather focus on just replacing them and investing in my current team that I have. Again, play better offense. Don't focus so much on defense. There's a Marcus Aurelius quote, or I, I think, or maybe it's Socrates, but he says, um, it's something about focus more, focus less on fighting the old and more on building the new. That's how you progress. And that's what I really wanna encourage you guys to do. So take your focus off of how can we prevent loss and how can we get people who leave us or screw us over or whatever, and instead just focus on how can we get, build more people, make better salesmen, create a better office environment. 
make our guys better closers, streamline our, our recruiting efforts, right? So if you need help with that, please let me help you. Visit my website, roofsellsmastery.com. Um, you can invest in the recruiting machine or the new hires training or the all-inclusive business owners package. That is the most common one for business owners because it has everything from A to Z, right? You've got recruiting, new hire sales training, sales team management, advanced sales training, supplementing, and exacting mastery, and all that stuff is in there too. So um, that's my advice for you guys. Like, please don't focus on like the things you can't control and focus on the things you can control. Kind of like the same thing with customers. Like if a customer decides they want to cancel their, their agreement with you and they want to go with another roofer, you could spend hours, days, weeks, and money on lawyers trying to go after that customer to get them to do that job, which you're probably not going to get them to do anyway. And even if they did, they'd be the most difficult customer of all time. Instead, let it go and just go get a new job. You can go out into the street right now and in 10 minutes line up another inspection that you could get, get a deal signed on. Like your time is better spent playing offense, not defense. Put that in the book, take it to the bank, keep it, write it down, okay? Keep it up here. As always, you guys, thank you for watching. Um, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel here. You can go to roofsellsmastery.com to enroll in programs and keep it crunchy. I'll catch you the next one. Bye.